Hi, and welcome to Digital Tech Reviews and Tips. Today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about and giving my full review of the Canon SX70HS. This camera retails for about $550 and is the sequel or the follow-up to the SX60HS. I've owned both the SX50 and the SX60HS, used them both off and on kind of as a second camera. And this one really has some specs that are a nice upgrade, but I honestly felt it didn't go far enough. The good thing about this camera has 4K video, has a 20 megapixel sensor, has that good 65x zoom, that's the main reason most people are getting this camera, and it also has an external mic input and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Using this camera out in the field, I generally found it was pretty fast and pretty good in bright conditions, but if you take it into anything other than a bright sunny day or a really well lit interior shot, you're gonna often find that the shutter slows down way too much there's a lot of grain in the image, and generally the pictures and video quality just drops off a cliff. So, yeah, unless you're going to be outside 24-7, in the well, even then it wouldn't work because the moon would come up, so. But unless you're going to be, you know, shooting only exclusively in bright conditions, you know, you can guarantee the sun's going to always be out there in the right spot, and you're not going to have to, you know, go inside quickly to shoot something or, you know, fight a cloudy day then this camera really is a no-brainer. Otherwise, other than image quality, there's definitely a lot of gripes I have with the camera design itself. First off, it does have this mic input here on the side, which is a nice feature. Canon added this with the SX60HS after a lot of beginner videographers, you know, wanted to start with this camera and then move up, you know, add a mic, add a couple little more features to increase their production quality. However, you might notice something here on the top, and that's that it doesn't have a hot shoe mount. Now, that's important because say you take, you know, something like this Rode mic right here, plug it in, okay? Yep, all everything's going good. Goes in, yeah. Oh wait, yeah, where does it go? There's a flash there, cool, that does nothing for me. So yeah, that's a bit of a oversight, I think, on Canon's part. I mean, you can definitely get things that will connect to the bottom here on the tripod mount and you can put out to the side and give you a hot shoe or a cold shoe in that case, but not having it on the camera itself really seems like a stupid thing. I'm guessing they put the Wi-Fi up here and the mics, that's why they couldn't find space for it, but Canon, come on, that's, if you're gonna put the mic input, at least give us a place to put the mic. Now the second thing that seems like a little thing, but really is a big thing in the long run, is the fact that you can't charge this camera via USB. Canon includes this traditional wall charger. It's not a big deal if they don't include a USB compatible charger. Uh, most cameras don't really and I've stuck with this kind of wall charger. It's a staple in the Canon world and really everything across from Nikon to Sony. So not really much of a complaint here. However, the thing that Canon deviates from most camera makers nowadays is the fact that this USB port here on the side cannot be used to charge the camera. Now that's a big deal if you're really shooting on the go and you want to charge it in between with your external battery or you know you only have this charger and, and you got an extra battery and you want to charge like two batteries at the same time. Basically it just opens up a lot more options and it's really something that I don't know why they didn't put into this camera. Almost every camera nowadays ships with it. Everything from the lower price Lumix FZ80 over here to you know higher end cameras like my A7S II that I'm shooting on. Yeah, Canon, I don't know if you can update that with the firmware update and make it possible, but that's really a good thing to have, especially if you're shooting a time lapse with this camera, which it can do. And finally, the third thing that I think Canon overlooked when they were designing this camera was the fact that they didn't include a touchscreen. They updated the viewfinder to be an OLED display with a higher resolution, so that's good, but they left this viewfinder as the same traditionally like flip out format, which is nice to have, but I wanna be able to touch it, Canon, you know? Again, this FZ80 over here, which I'm a big fan of for $300, you know, it comes with a touch screen, doesn't flip out, but you think that for $550, Canon could include a flip out touch screen. It's a very nice thing to have on this camera if you wanna, you know, touch to focus or even just navigate through the menus. I think we're all getting more and more used to touch screens, so it really would have been something nice for Canon to include. Ultimately, the question I see the most often on my unboxings of cameras like these and the sample videos I put up is who is this for and is it right for me? If you're a beginner out there who's gonna be shooting outside a lot in bright conditions, this is a really great camera. You know, a comparable kit for like a DSLR 
uh, with the zoom lens is going to set you back over two thousand dollars when you consider that the zoom and like a 2x teleconverter is going to be around fifteen hundred dollars otherwise there are other cameras out there similar to this i said the fc80 that's a really popular one for less there's also ones like the p900 which are a little more and the p1000 i wouldn't really compare because that camera is huge if you've ever gotten your hands on it i didn't really know what to expect when you know I read reviews about it online because I never owned it but I walked into a Best Buy and they had it on display and it honestly feels like it's three or four times bigger than your typical DSLR so that is really a dedicated like telescope type camera where the P900 would be a more direct replacement to this now who is this camera not for if you're looking for a vlog camera I would probably stay away from this it really is pretty big I mean it's compact for having that nice zoom in it and it's versatile but if you're looking for vlogging you're looking for something that you can bring anywhere you know something like this pocket camera type point and shoot or even your iPhone or GoPro those would be better alternatives to a camera like this if it did have that cold shoe mount on the top or hot shoe on the top and you could put that mic up there easily then I would consider it a little more but because it does have that mic input and then doesn't have the mount on the top that really definitely is a subtraction for vloggers. Also, again, not having that USB charging is another downside for vloggers on the go. You generally want to be able to, you know, keep your camera charged up at a moment's notice so you can be ready to get that shot. And not having that ability to charge it really quickly with, you know, an external power pack or something just, you know, makes it slightly less usable and user friendly. I also wouldn't recommend this to anyone if you're going to be shooting indoors, primarily, you know, basketball games or really action stuff. A DSLR for most people, unless you really, really, really need the lens. Now look deep in your heart and if you ask yourself, I need, you know, this type of zoom and can't settle for a 300 millimeter or 250 millimeter, then this camera might be a worthwhile option. Otherwise, definitely go for a DSLR, you know, the Canon T6i or T6 or the Nikon D3400, D3500, D32, you know, those lower series DSLRs are gonna get you a lot better image and video quality, even if they aren't 4K than this, in you know, most conditions. If you're gonna be using this on a tripod and outside in bright conditions, I'd say go for it, you know. I personally have a higher end camera, the A7S II, but cameras like this are a nice way for me to get that, you know, pickup shot if I need, you know, a quick shot of a bird or, something like that where I don't want to spend you know a couple thousand dollars on that really pricey lens I can just use a camera like this to get that two or three second shot and it fills in perfectly because it's 4k and you know if I put it on a tripod and shoot in the right conditions it's gonna be good but if you're looking for a camera that can really be the go-to camera that you can shoot in all conditions I would probably stick away from this camera and try to spend your money elsewhere hopefully that kind of answered some of your questions and helped you decide if this was the right camera for you. I kind of rambled on a bit there, but if you're still here, thank you for watching very much. Uh, subscribe to my channel down below or someplace if you want to see more videos like this. Leave a comment down below or any questions, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. There is a link also in the description to this camera. I would appreciate you using it. It gives me a little kickback on the affiliate link, helps me you know, create videos like this to help you decide what to buy, but if not, choice is yours. I just appreciate you guys watching this. Hope it helped you out. And as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Peace out.